Hi everyone, Brightbone here, back with another video. Today, I want to talk to you about a recent exploit against Palo Alto firewalls. This exploit basically happened around November of 2024. So 11.18 was the date it was published. It was updated all the way to 11.23, so late November. Now, I know a lot of people don't patch their firewalls that frequently. So I urge you to do so given how easy this one is to exploit now. They've added the exploit to Metasploit Framework and it works very well. I'm gonna show you here in just a second. You can get a interpreter shell on a Palo Alto firewall. It's pretty crazy. If you have questions about this particular vulnerability, you should follow this guidance, CVE 2024-0012. Uh, there are some workarounds. There is also updated code that fixes this vulnerability in the management interface. If your management interface is facing the web, stop the video right now and go get it off the web. You're crazy. Don't do that. Put your management interface on the inside of your network and so that your firewall can protect itself from adversaries and these types of attacks. All right, let's take a look at Kali Linux and I will show you the exploitation. So I have Metasploit over here. And notice I'm running 6.44.44. Notice this is the dev version. This isn't what comes in Kali Linux. If you do an apt update, you're probably not going to have this particular exploit available to you. It's in the nightly builds right now. So you want to make sure that you have updated to one of the nightly builds if you want to use this as part of a pen test or red team engagement. But essentially, once we have Metasploit open, we can do use. We'll do use exploit and you can do tab completion here. It's under Linux, then HTTP, then pan OS, pan OS underscore management unauth RCE. And then if I clear that out, you can see this is what it will look like. You want to set your options. You want to set your R host. So we go options. You can see our options here. And then we want to do set your R host. Your remote host is the IP of the management interface of this firewall. So in this case, it'll be 192.168.136.210. Just like I have over here, this is the management interface for this particular PAN VM. And we'll go back over here to Kali. You just want to make sure you're targeting your management interface. So you do set our host. Now, if you just want to check if you're vulnerable without running the exploit, you can simply do check and then do 192.168.136.210. And it will let you check to see if it is vulnerable before you try to exploit it. Uh, this exploit does take a little few minutes to run. Notice it says the target is vulnerable. So we're going to go ahead and exploit this firewall. Now we'll just do exploit. And this is another reason you don't want your management interface on the web because bad guys now have a very low bar to entry to be able to exploit this threat. This one's gonna take a minute to run. So just bear with me here. Almost there. Oh, we have an interpreter session opened. It does take a minute after this point to actually open the interpreter session, but it is open. And there we go, we have an interpreter. So if I go shell now, I can do who am I? And notice I'm the root user of this Palo Alto firewall. If I do PS, you can see I'm running all of the Linux stuff on the back end, but you can see the pan specific things, pan task. Uh, you know you are running as the below operating system below the way that the firewall works. So at this point, you have basically complete control of the firewall. You can do all sorts of crazy things. Um, you could get configurations. You could get basically anything that's stored on this particular box. You are at the Linux subsystem below the firewall, which is crazy, right? Okay. All right, Brightphone, you have shown me how to exploit this. Great. 
I could just read the documentation for that. Well, what you can't get from the documentation that you can get from me is detection, right? We can detect this threat as it happens. One thing the pan documentation does not have is some of the weird artifacts that this creates. If we go over here and we look at our Palo Alto, and I do refresh here, you're going to see a bunch of weird commands. Notice you see user cat, and then you see user echo, and user rm. That's very strange. There is no user on a Palo Alto system that ever logs in as cat or echo. So there's your detection for this. You can write rules that will detect this particular exploit based on that. If we come over here to our elastic sim, I've already got a command over here. We'll add or rm to it as well, just to be complete. And when we run this, we should get back. Well, let me. Let me change my time frame here. We'll do the last 15 minutes. And then we'll do R4 star RM star as well. And now you can see this is our logs of the particular threat as it happens. So if you look here in the message, you can see user cat var temp random shell logged in via panorama from console over an SSL connection. The interesting piece, this firewall does not have panorama. There's no panorama on here. So it's going to tell you it's got panorama even if it doesn't. Now, if you have panorama, which a lot of shops do, that's not really a good artifact for you. But the user being this weird variable in quotes is exactly what you need to look for. And it, I can tell you this much. In my history with administering pa Palo Alto firewalls, um, I have never seen a log message that looks like this. If you see something that says user echo or user cat, you are definitely exploited here. There's no question. So write some rules in your SIM for this, and you can detect when an adversary is using this exploit against your Palo Alto management interface. Better yet, patch. If you can't patch, use the detection. All right. Well, thank you once again, and hack the planet to defend better.